and double check that. Okay, it says we're recording, so we are good to go. Uh, and let's go to our digital screen here. And whenever I switch, I have to bring back the chat. Uh, there we are. Okay, and let me move those windows. So they're out of the way so I can write on here. All right. Okay, we are good to go then. And I haven't seen any other questions pop up. So let's, let's, uh, let's begin. Um, so, oh, and one thing that was pointed out to me, oops, that's not supposed to happen. There we go. Um, one thing that was pointed out to me, <laughs> um, which I, I meant to respond, I haven't yet, um, but I received an email on the, on the schedule that uh, I actually copied the schedule from the leap year. So <laughs> after February uh, 28th, the days are off by one or, uh, and that's because I copied the leap year schedule. <laughs> so I apologize for that. I, I'll try and, I'll try and fix that. And thank you um, for pointing that out, that the individual that emailed me, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and fix, uh, fix the dates on those and get that uploaded as well. Um, but that's not as, as, uh, as high a priority as um, getting the, the grade synced up. So I'll focus on that. Um, but we're right on schedule. We're in chapter four. Uh, we're supposed to cha uh, finish chapter four today, which I think we, we can. Uh, so we're in section 4D, uh, which is on the, uh, let me change the size there, uh, 4D, which is loan payments credit cards and mortgages. Um, and last class we finished example one. So uh, in, in this section, we had a, um, the loan payment formula, the loan repayment formula. And, and for this, uh, just to reiterate that as well, um, for this course, for this chapter, uh, when we're talking about loan payments, we're only looking at amortized loans or uh, what was the other common word for it? In installment loans, um, where we are paying the same amount each uh, payment period at regular periods. So take, for example, paying the same amount monthly or the same amount weekly or the same amount yearly, whatever the, the question calls for. Usually I think it's monthly. Um, and so we have an equation for that, which we will, uh, I think I'll, I'll rewrite that. Uh, but we finished with example one, which was finding, um, given, given a specific situation, how much do you pay per month for a loan? And so we're actually going to start today with example two in the textbook, which is on page two, that's uh, 248, that's, that's the right one, 248. And example two kind of takes uh, the same information from example one, but we're going to look a little more in depth as to what's going on uh, during each month for, for this payment. So we have the same situation. So I'm going to, uh, this is going to, for the first bit is going to look almost exactly like the example one, which was on page 246. Uh, so suppose you have a student loan totaling uh, 7,500 with a, an APR of 9% and a loan term of 10 years. If you make monthly payments on the loan, so, so far this is the same. Uh, for example, one, it was find the amount uh, uh, that you pay each month. And then, you know, how much did you pay over the lifetime of the, over the loan? How much went to interest? For example, two, we're going to ask, um, uh, determine the portions of your payment, of your monthly payment that go towards the principal amount and the interest for the first three months. Okay. 
So that's what we're doing with example two. Uh, now, before we jump into this, um, uh, there was one thing that I wanted to mention. When, right. Um, this example is is nice in a way that it kind of breaks down to show you what's going on at each step. And you can do it for the entire payment. Um, usually, you do that with an Excel sheet or something um, because of just the nature of this. Uh, now, this example in and of itself, I won't be uh, testing on. There is, a, I think, I think I left one or two. I think one. I think I left one homework problem uh, that was very similar to this, where you look at each each uh, payment for the first two or three payments. Um, but this we're not going to be testing on. So, <clears throat> because because we're looking at this loan, uh, the uh, remember, the principal is the amount that we owe, and that's going to change um, as we pay off the loan. Uh, but the, the loan is also gaining interest as time goes on. So when we make a monthly payment, a uh, certain amount of that will go towards the principal amount, which is how much we still owe, and a certain amount of that will go towards the interest that was accrued for that month. And um, in order to pay it off, you'd have to pay more than the interest that is uh, that is being gained. Um, so for this this uh, type of a question, step one uh, would be to find the monthly payments. So how much exactly are you paying per month? And for that, again, we're using our payment formula. Let's just remind ourselves of that. So the payment is equal to, oh, sorry, let me adjust that, is equal to the principal times APR divided by N for our numerator. And our denominator is this mess, 1 minus parentheses 1 plus APR over N to the negative N times Y power. So that is our, our payment formula. And we went through the example, example one yesterday for that. And so for this, this example, again, example two is, is taking example one, but in a different direction. Um, we would have the principal amount would be 7,500. The APR is 9%, but we do that in decimal form, so the 0.09 loan term of 10 years, so Y is 10, and monthly payments, so N is 12 in this example. And what we got uh, from example one, last class, is the payment for this, in this particular loan, is $95.01. Oops, $95.01 per month. Remember, we are making uh, monthly payments. OK, so the first step here would be to find the monthly payments. So you'd identify all of the variables, plug it into the formula, and then into your calculator and get what the monthly payments are. OK, step two is we want to find the amount of interest for the first month, for the first payment period. Because here we're looking at the first three payments that we make. So the first three months that we make uh, payments on this loan, we want to figure out how much of that goes towards interest. And so in order to determine that, we have to know exactly how much interest did the loan accrue uh, for that first month. So step two is we find the amount of interest for the first month. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this, uh, but uh, for this example, let's, let's do the following. So uh, we're going to look at what we call the monthly, and that Color is a little bit hard to see. Monthly, there we go. 
percentage rate is going to be the annual percentage rate divided by 12. So here, um, because we're making monthly payments, we're looking at what is the first, what is the amount of interest gained for the first month? If we were looking for weekly payments, we'd ask what is the amount of interest in the first week? Uh, but here again, we're looking for the first month. And in this example, it was 9%. So we divide that by 12 and let's get our calculators. If you don't have those ready to go, go ahead and get those ready and follow along with me if you would. So we divide nine by 12, nine divided by 12. And we get 0.75%. But again, we're using this in a formula, so we need this in decimal form. So in decimal form, that is 0 0.0075. Okay. So the interest, let me uh, switch colors again. The interest from the first month then is going to be the principal amount. So 7,500. So remember this is the first month after we've taken out the loan. Uh, so the principal amount is 7,500. That's how much we, uh, we took out on the loan uh, times the monthly percentage rate. So times the 0 0.0075. And this will give us the amount of interest that we have. And so that is $56 and 25 cents. Okay. Um, we have a bit more to do, but I want to uh, make sure that everyone's following along. So are there any questions up to this point? Okay. I'm not seeing any questions. So as a note, the principal, uh, if we didn't make any payments for the first month, would be the 75,000 plus the 5625. And you can calculate that. Um, but let's, let's, uh, let's continue on. Uh, the other thing I wanted, wanted to note is that the, the interest that, we're, that, we, that we got, the interest that accrued, the 5625, is less than our monthly payments, 9501, which is good because that means we're actually paying off the loan. Um, if we were paying 56.25 per month, then the amount would never go down. If we were paying less, the amount of principal that we owe would go up. Uh, but if we're paying more than the 56.25, then the amount is going to go down. Okay. Now, since we're doing this for the first three payments, so for for the first three months, let's make uh, let's make a table to kind of display this information. Since we're going to have the same type of information for the first three months. So let's look at a table. Let's set it up in this way. Let's have our months here. So the month that we make the payment, the interest that is accrued for that month. Let's look at the payment to the principal amount. So to the amount that we owe and the balance. Okay, and we're looking for our first three months, our first three payments. So we have something like this. Okay, so for the first month, if we go back to our previous page, the interest that accrued was $56.25. So here the interest that we got was $56.25. Now, we, we're going to assume that we did make a payment this first month. We're going to assume that we're making these payments. So how much did we pay for month one? How much do we pay towards the loan? Are you talking about how much towards the balance? Um, no, I'm talking about how much the entire payment was. Wasn't it $95 and one cent? That's exactly right. Yep. So notice we paid 
$95 and one cent. So if 56.25 went, uh, is the amount of interest that, that accrued, how much of, of our first payment went towards the principal? So it's going to be the $95 and one cent minus the interest that accrued minus the 56.25 because anything after that is going towards how much we owe. So the first $56.25 goes towards the interest. So now we've paid off the interest and the rest of it is going towards the principal, towards the amount that we owe. And I see that in chat. Very good. $38.76. So then what is what is our balance then? What is our balance in, in terms of what, what we owe after that first month? Well, initially it was 7,000. So, um, maybe right initially i have 70 7461.24 that is exactly right yep 74 uh 7461 and 24 cents and so initially we owe the 7500 well 5625 went towards interest we paid that and the amount we had left was 3876 so that we subtract from the 75,000 and we get 7461 dollars uh, and 24 cents. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, for the second month, so after month 1, the amount that we owe is 7461 dollars and 24 cents. So how much interest do we accrue for that second month? Well, let's go back to our previous page. Notice the monthly percentage rate, the amount of interest we get per month is 0.75%. So the amount of interest that we owe is going to be 0.75% of our balance, 0.75% of the $7,461.24. So maybe let's write that, 0.75%. 5% of the principal. And so we take the uh, 0 0.0075 times by the new balance times by the 7461.24. So let's do that 0 0.0075 times 7461.24. And we round to the nearest cent since we're look, talking about a dollar amount. And what we get is $55 and 96 cents. Okay. Uh, any questions up to this point? Okay. Um, I think I see, I'm gonna mute this person. I can hear a little bit coming from the microphone. Um, okay. So now, how much did we pay for the second month? Well, we paid $95.01. This is per month. That's what we're paying every month. That's what our installment loan is. We pay the same amount each month. And if the amount of interest that we gained was $55.96, then the payment towards the principal is going to be the $95.01 minus the $55.96. So we do the $95.01 minus the $55.96, and we get $39.05. Let me uh, write that better, sorry. $39.05 is going towards the principal. And so our new balance after the second month, it's going to be our old balance minus the $39.05. And so what we get is $7,422 and 19 cents, and I see that in the chat, very good. Okay, and then so for the third month, we would follow the same process. So we wanna know first how much interest did we get? Well, that's 0.75% of the principal amount, which is now the $7,422.19. So we do the 0 0.0075 times the 7422.19 and I plugged that into my calculator wrong. Let me fix that. 
and we get $55. and 67 cents. And then we figure out how much we owe to the, how much we paid to principal. So we take the $95 and one cent and minus that the 5567 and we get $39 and 34 cents. And then we subtract what we paid to the principal, and now we owe $7,382.85. So that is the first three months, uh, the first three payments. Excuse me? Yes. How, how come we owe, uh, how can we pay, uh, oh, I see, we are supposed to pay more, to, oh, it's more to principal. Oh, I get it now. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, that's the best type of question when you when you get to uh, when you're asking it at, at a, you, ans you answer it yourself. That's that's always nice when that happens. Um, now, notice we are so we're paying each month uh, for ten years. So if we wanted to see the entire thing, we would have 120 months. Obviously, that you wouldn't want to do by hand. And I'm sure some of you can see how you would program this into Excel to see what the amount is. Uh, but you'll notice that because we're paying off the principal, the amount of interest goes down each month because there's less money to calculate interest from. And so the amount that we're paying towards the principal is increasing each month, even though we're paying the same, the 9501 per month. And so as you go down, you'd see that the interest would go down because the balance is smaller and the payment to the principal would go up because we're paying the same amount. And eventually that will get to zero at uh, month 120. Okay, so um, that is that example. And again, this, this one I wanted to cover uh, because it's nice to see what's going on on a well, per payment basis. Are we basis. supposed to add something all together for those first three months or is it supposed to be itemized like as that itemization all we have to do? Oh, uh, just the itemization. Yeah, so it's for the first month, how much went towards interest, how much went towards the principal and that we have from our table. Yeah, so itemized, uh, which is from the table. And from the second month, how much went to in towards interest, how much went towards principal. Um, let's see where I was going. Ahead. Oh, yes. So um, for the exam, again, I'm not going to put this this particular example on on the exam because it's a little bit intense, especially when you're not quite used to if, if you're not quite used to this, that can be a bit much. Um, but it is useful to look at what is going on on a on a per payment basis, at least for the first bit. And if you wanted to, again, you can program this into Excel and you can look at what happens throughout the entire lifetime of the loan. Um, but I did, I did have a homework question or two. I think I, I think I just put one on there. A homework question or two, uh, like this example. So uh, something to again practice the payment formula and then um, practice figuring out what what uh, what we owe per month. Okay, um, there is so that that is section four D. Um, although I did want to go to uh, go back to section 4b because um, there is a type of, of question on the mini project quiz that I didn't cover in lecture that I skipped in lecture so I want to go back and, and cover that um, but for that we're actually let's look at the mini project so let's go to our web campus and let me make sure that I'm I'm not. Let me go to the student view. There we go. So this is what you should see when you log in. Uh, so we scroll down. I've, I have uh, updated. I'm going to keep that updated from now on. Uh, so if you scroll down, um, there is now a module for chapter four, which has the mini project, since the rest of this is, is covered in, in the lecture. Uh, so let's take a look at the mini project. Let's go ahead and open up, open that up. Uh, now we're going to go, we're going to look at some of these in detail, but for most of these, I'm going to leave um, the actual calculation of the answer to, uh, for you. But I did want to go through uh, 
at least, you know, go through as a class what is on this mini project for, so you can see what to expect. Um, so question one, uh, let's go ahead and read through it. Suppose you would like to accrue uh, $200,000 in a retirement account exactly 30 years from now by making a single deposit in an account or fund that earns interest. Uh, so here, notice we are uh, depositing something into a fund that earns interest. We're making then an investment. So we know it's either going to be the simple interest formula or the compound interest formula. That's our section 4B. Uh, for part A, uh, the account earns an APR of 5% compounded annually. So because we're compounding annually, then we know that that's going to be compound interest. And for part B, the, detail, the details are a little bit different. We're looking at a different APR but it's com and a different compounding time, but it's still compounded uh, interest. So for question one, we're doing compound interest. Okay, so let's, um, so let's write down everything that we, that we know. Uh, so I'm gonna switch back and forth between the scratch paper and this um, as we go through this. So let's look at question one, let's look at uh, A. So we're using the compound interest formula. So A equals the principal times one plus the APR divided by N to the N times Y power. So that is the formula that we're using. Uh, and now we want to write down all of the information that we have. So uh, just as before, we're going to write down uh, all of the variables and identify those from the problem. So we have A, we have P, we have APR, we have N, and we have Y. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, quiz. So here we have, suppose you would like to accrue 200,000 in a retirement account exactly 30 years from now. So what we have, if we go back to our scratch paper, we are actually given what A is. We want A, the amount after so many years, to be 200,000. And we also know what Y is because uh, they told us exactly after 30 years. Okay. Uh, let's go back. Uh, by making a single deposit in an account, how much money will you have to initially deposit? So for this one, we're looking for the principal amount that we invest. We're looking for P. And we're doing part A. So let's, uh, while we're here, get the, the other two things. So we have an APR of 5%. And this is compounded annually. So N is going to be 1. So let's go back to our paper here. So P, this is what we want to know. So this is what we want. It's what we're looking for. The APR was 5%. And we want that in decimal form, so 0 0.05. And N, the number of times we're paying, uh, sorry, the number of times that we, we are gaining interest is 1. It's compounded annually. OK. So this is different from the question, uh, from the examples we had in class, which is why I wanted to go over it. Uh, because here we're looking for P, uh, whereas in the previous ones we were looking for A and we were given P. But the process is going to be very similar. We're, we're still going to plug everything into the equation. So let's plug everything into the equation and see what we get. So we have 200,000 equals the principal, which is what we're looking for, times one plus the APR is 0 0.05 divided by n is 1 to the power of 1 times 30. OK, so this is what we have. Now, just remember the first rule of mathematics, which is don't panic. Let's take a little bit of time to analyze what's going on here. If you look on the right-hand side, this piece of the equation, which Let's uh, box it up. This piece of the equation is going to be a number. We can plug this into our calculator and get 
what the value is, what the actual decimal is for this. So, uh, and we'll do that in just a moment. So notice what we have is 200,000 equals a variable times a number. So to solve for that variable, we divide both sides by that number. And again, that number here is this green box. So um, what, I'm, what, what I would recommend doing is in your calculator, we're going to first calculate this, the green box, um, which we'll write, how do we type that into the calculator? Although you uh, probably already know since that's from the compound interest formula um, section. And then we take the 200,000 divided by that. So we're going to use our answer key, the 200,000 divided by that. So here the, we're going to do the parentheses one plus the 0 0.05 divided by one. And I am going to put the divided by one in um, because this is not always going to be one. N is not always one. It's going to be something different in the next uh, part. Um, and then we do the exponent. So either the caret key or the y to the x key or x to the y, depending on your calculator. And then parentheses, one times 30, parentheses, and then equals. And that is going to give us a value. That's going to give us a number. Now, to solve for, pre, solve for P, for the principal amount, again, we have 200,000 equals P times this number, times the green box. So to solve for P, we divide both sides of that equation by the number, by the green box. So, and unfortunately I need, well, maybe I don't. So for step two, we're going to do the 200,000 divided by the answer and see what we get. So let's go ahead and, and do that with our calculators. So we have parentheses, one plus the 0 0.05 divided by one parentheses to the power parentheses, one times 30 parentheses, and equals. And you should get 4.321942 and so on. So then we do 200,000 divided by that. So 200,000 divided by the answer. And we get, in this case, uh, four six two seven five point four nine, so forty six thousand dollars two hundred and seventy. Uh, sorry, forty six thousand two hundred and seventy five dollars and forty one cents. So that's how much we need to invest into this specific account to get the two hundred thousand in exactly thirty years from now. Okay. Uh, so any questions? up to this point. Any, any, any questions on any of the things that we've talked about so far? Oh, that should be 49 cents. Thank you. Not, not 41 cents, 49 cents. Thank you. I, I, I read it as 49, but I wrote it as 41. I apologize for that. Okay, so again, this, this question is similar to what we had before. And again, I apologize for skipping that part of the lecture, but um, wanted to revisit it today. So usually in, in, um, in the examples, we're solving for A and we're given all of the other information. Uh, but for this example, we wanna solve for P and we're given the rest of the information. And notice the process is almost the same. So the first thing we do is we, well, we identify the equation, which we know it's compound interest. We're making a, an investment and we know it's compounded as, you know, annually in this case, or it earns interest annually. So we know that it's not simple interest, it's compound interest. Then we write down all of our variables and identify what we have and what we want, plug those into the equation. 
then that is where it deviates a little bit from, from the previous examples. We note that on the right-hand side, this, this part um, that is covered by the green box is going to be a number. We don't know what number it is until we actually plug it into our calculator, but it is some number. And so using algebra, we know if we have a number equals a variable times a number, we divide both sides by that, in this case, the green box number to solve for the variable, to solve for p. And we can do that with our calculator, again, without um, rounding by using the answer key. So first we find what is in the green box, plug that into our calculator, and then do the 200,000 divided by that. So using our answer key, and we get the principal. So in this case, the 46,275. Um, so for the, that's a good question. For the compound interest, uh, N represents how many times uh, interest is added to the account or calculated on the account. So let's go back to question one. Here, this is compounded annually. So uh, N is the number of compounding periods per year, I guess is the way that we phrased it in the actual section. Uh, so if we're compounding this annually, then that's once per year. Um, so B is going to be, uh, again, the setup is going to be the same. Yeah, so quarterly is four, that's exactly right, yep. So uh, in this case for, for B, the APR is different and the compounding period is different, but the rest of the setup is the same for question 1B. Okay, so that's question one on the mini project quiz for chapter four. All right. Um, quarterly, so no, uh, quarterly is uh, four times a year. Um, so that's every three months. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I think that's, I think that's originally from business because you talk about how you did in the first quarter, how you did in the second quarter. So that's, you split the, the year up into fourths. So that's, anyways, compounded quarterly N is four. All right. Um, Okay, so let's go to question two. Uh, if you have any questions on question one, let me know. Um, and I will be checking chat, but if not, we'll continue on to question two. So question one, a uh, little bit different, but the process, uh, once you identify everything, it's only, only slightly different from what we had before. Okay, so question two, let's read through this together and then we'll look at part A and part B. Uh, so a retired couple uh, plans to supplement their retirement income with monthly withdrawals uh, on the interest earned in a retirement account, which has a balance of $200,000. So here again, we have a retirement account. Uh, so that's an investment. And we know that the principal in this case is 200,000. So the principal is 200,000. Um, so this is like in uh, in a real world situation, you'd have part A is the first 30 years and then part uh, question two is after that when once you retire. Anyways, so part A, if the fund earns interest monthly, so notice we're earning interest monthly. When we earn interest um, at certain time periods, that's compound interest. So we're using our compound interest formula uh, and uh, earns interest monthly at an APR of 6%. Uh, here, the couple always withdraws the interest from the account. And we're asking how much is generated in interest each month. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit different, but we're using the same equation. Um, so again, first rule of mathematics, don't panic. Uh, and then for this type of question, since we're looking at a compound interest formula, compound interest investment, we'll write down, well, we have the equation. So we'll write down what variables we have and what we want to know, and then we'll plug everything in and figure that out. So let's go to our, well, let's read through it one more time and see if we can identify what we have. So um, interest on a re retirement account, which has a balance of 200,000. So we know the principal amount is $200,000. That's what we have invested into the retirement fund. Um, for part A, if the fund earns interest monthly, so notice this is earning interest 
monthly. So the number of interest, uh, number of times that it gains interest per year is 12. It's compounded monthly, earns interest monthly. Um, so those two phrases are in interchangeable. Earns interest monthly is the same as compounded monthly. So N is 12 at an APR of 6%. So we know our APR is 6%, which the couple always withdraws from the account. So we're just withdrawing the interest, we're leaving the 200,000 in. How much is generated in an interest each month? Okay. So let's write down what we have then. Let's go to our, let's get a uh, fresh digital page. And again, we're using our compound interest. So uh, since I already wrote that down, I don't want to write it again here, uh, though you should have that hopefully uh, open and written down from the previous question. So 2A, we, we identified our principal amount is 200,000. We identified, well, A, the amount after a certain time, this we don't know. This is what we want to solve for. Now. I'm going, to, I'm going to make a statement. This is not going to be the end of the question. But in terms of the formula, the equation that we're given, we don't know what A is. So that's what we're looking for. Um, the APR was given to us. That is 6%. So we write that in decimal form. That's our 0 0.06. Uh, N, the number of times it is compounded or the number of times it gains interest per year is 12. It uh, gains interest every month, so it's compounded monthly, so n is 12. And here is the tricky part, one of the, the first tricky part. What is y? What, so what is the time period that we're looking at? So let's go back to our question. How much is generated in interest each month? So not quite, I'm seeing a, uh, one in the chat, that's not quite. Well, maybe one what? It would be one twelfth because it was the twelfth of a year. Yes, and, oh, and I'm seeing that in, in chat as well. So notice the time period that we're looking for is one month. How much interest is gained in one month? Well, why is the number of years? How many, how many years is a month? Well, it's one twelfth of a year. So let's go back to our digital page, that's 1 12th. And I'm seeing that in chat, very good, 1 12th. So that's the first tricky part. And I think I mentioned in class that that's not always a whole number. So you have to be a little bit careful on that. Um, and that is the case here. All right. So we plug everything into our compound interest formula. So we have A is equal to the 200,000 times one plus the APR is 0 0.06 divided by N is 12 to the power of 12 times 1 12th. And this is going to give us some value. So I'll just represent it as a box. So here, I mean, this is a new project quiz. So we're not gonna do the, uh, not gonna give you the entire question, um, the entire answer. So that's that's our first our first uh, application of the formula here in this question. Uh, are we finished? Is A what we're looking for? Well, what does A represent in the compound interest formula? And A represents the total balance in the investment. So this is the total balance that is in the investment after one month. So let's go back to our uh, question. Is that what we're looking for? Or are we looking for something else? So looking at question A here. We're looking for interest. Yes, good. We're looking for interest, not the total balance. How much is generated in interest each month? Very good. So let's go back to our page here. So we know what the total balance is. So to find interest, if you recall, interest is equal to the total balance 
minus the principal amount invested. So in this case, we're going to take whatever this uh, box is, whatever the amount we get for the total balance, minus the principal invested, which is the 200,000. And that will give us the interest that we are looking for. So the interest that we get for the first month is then. Excuse me. Yeah. I know uh, this yes. makes sense to me because if they are using up the interest each month, then won't the principal just remain at 200,000? Yes. So why we have to do this long calculation to figure that out when we already know that? Um, because the the equation uh, that we have, the, the compound interest equation, um, mm -hmm. is assuming we don't withdraw anything from the account. So if we were looking at, say, what what is, uh, if, if we wanted to know, you know, how much we had after 10 years, then we would just use the equation directly. But here we're looking for, well, all right, how much interest did we get in the first month? And that's how much the couple is going to withdraw. So they always have this 200,000 in their account. Oh. Did, did I answer your question or did I talk around it? Because I sometimes do that. Kind of, okay. So so the we're doing that equation, but instead of looking for interest, we're looking for total balance. Um, right. So for for the for the formula for the compound interest formula, A always stands for the total balance. And so in order to find the interest, we have to do one extra step and take the the total that we get, the A, and minus the. Oh, I see. What I see now, okay. what you're saying is you get, you find out how much it becomes after one month, and then you that would give you the pr principal plus that one month's interest. And yes. then if you subtract the 200,000 from that, that gives you how much the couple gets each month. Yep, because that's the amount of interest for one month, which is how often it gains interest. And so if they withdraw that, then the balance will always stay at 200,000. Yep, exactly right. Good. Um, okay, so that's, that's part A. Um, so part A, again, a little bit different, um, but uh, still, still can be found. So you just have to kind of think through it. So the two tricky parts here was first the amount of time that we're looking for is one month. And remember, y is always given in years. So if we're looking at one month, one month is one twelfth of a year. So that's the first, the first tricky bit. And the second bit is a always gives us. Uh, for the compound interest formula, A always gives us the total balance after that time period, but we want just the interest. So we have to take the uh, A that we get minus the principal investment to get the interest for that first month. Very good. Okay, so that's part A. Um, and again, I'll, I'm not, we're not doing the all of the details because I have to leave some, some details for you since this is a mini project quiz. Um, Let's look at part B. And again, we'll, we'll kind of break this down uh, and look at how we can calculate it, but I'll leave the, the end details for you to figure out. So B, we want to estimate to the nearest tenth of a percent the annual interest rate needed for this couple to be able to earn $1,350 per month in interest from this $200,000 account. Okay. So we are taking, we're taking the same situation as before, but now we're looking for the APR. That's not uh, what we're given. So we're looking for the APR and we want the interest that is accrued to be 1,350. So let's go back to our digital paper. Oh, did that work? I don't think that worked. There we go. So for B, um, we have the principal amount is 200,000. Um, what is, what is A going to be? Well, from the problem we want, let me <laughs> rewrite that, want interest per month to be 
$1,350. So what should A be? Excuse me, for this for this problem, what should A be? It should be the 200,000 plus 1350. Exactly right. Because the 1350 is only the interest and A is the total balance. So we want the total balance to be the, the uh, principal amount plus the interest is $201,350. Okay. Now here, the APR is what we are looking for. That's what we want. So this is what we want. Here, um, Y, this is still the same situation as before. So Y is going to be 1 12th. We're looking at how much is earned for a month. And N is 12. It's still compounded monthly. So we're keeping most of the previous part the same, but we're changing the total amount uh, that now we're given. And what we're looking for is the APR. So we plug this into our uh, compound interest equation. Now let's see where, where this goes. Uh, so we have the $201,350 is equal to 200,000 times one plus the APR divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 1 12th. Okay. Now this seems a little bit complicated, but let's let's see if there's anything we can simplify immediately. And by that I mean what would be the problem part if you think about your order of operations? Exponents has to come first, so that's going to be a problem. But notice what is our exponent here? What is 12 times 1 twelfth? Wouldn't that just be a power of one? Yep, that is just a power of one. And what is anything to the first power? That number? Is itself, yes. So this is just, just goes away because of the way that the problem is set up. Okay, so we don't have to worry about exponents now because yeah, we did that. Anything to the power of one is itself, so that stays the same. So we can rewrite this as, uh, well, we want to solve for APR. So let's divide both sides by the 200,000. And sorry, I'm trying to write the small here. And so the right-hand side, so the left-hand side is this fraction. The right-hand side is now 1 plus APR divided by 12. So that's a number plus a variable divided by a number. So to solve for APR, we get APR by itself. We'd minus the one from both sides and then multiply both sides by 12. And that will give us the APR. And again, I'll leave the, the last bit of that, the details for you. So once we plug everything in and because of the way this is set up, because we're looking at the, um, this is compounded monthly and we wanna know what is the interest after that first month then our exponent goes away. Otherwise, we'd have to use a, a different type of math to solve this, which we aren't doing in this in this uh, course. Uh, right. So actually, if you go back to question part A, notice this. That's a very good point from uh, there in chat. This is actually also one. So you don't even have to worry about putting that into the calculator, the, the power part. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so that's part B. So part B, again, we're, we're, we're taking the same information for part A, but we're changing a little bit of the details and now we're looking for APR. Okay, let's go back to our, our quiz. Um, and if you have any, any questions again, uh, you can just let me know through the audio or in the chat and I'll, I'll address those, excuse me, address those as I see them. Um, so question three, we're looking at this. So this is like our uh, cash flow type problem. 
Um, so you want to know what are the expenses per month. And here we have, uh, we're assuming that four weeks is one month. So here, oh, hold, uh, question. Oh, um, so let me let me answer that really quickly. Uh, let's see. Um, so three is just a uh, cash flow problem. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty confident that you guys know how to do that since cash flow has been pretty pretty straightforward uh, compared with what we're doing now <laughs> in the in the, the rest of chapter four. Um, so uh, question four. Suppose you have decided to purchase a car for a total of twenty four thousand dollars and that you have $4,000 in savings to use as a down payment. And you want to plan, uh, you, you plan to finance the rest of the cost of the car uh, at an interest rate of 4.5% for a term of five years. Okay, so notice this is a loan payment question. Um, with a little bit of stuff at the beginning. So notice we have, uh, we, we are, uh, are trying to purchase a car for 24,000 and we wanna do 4,000 as a down payment. So how much do we need to take out for a loan to pay off the, to pay off the car? 20,000. 20,000, very good. Because it's the 24,000 minus the down payment, which is the, in this case is 4,000. And then the rest of this information you identify and you use the, um, well, so that's, that's the principal amount. Then you use the payment formula. So you'll, you have the rest of the information there to use the loan payment formula. So I'll leave that for you guys because that's pretty straightforward after you, after you find the principal. And the rest of this is going off from that. So calculate the total of all payments, calculate the total that was paid in interest and then at the end, all together, including the down payment, what, is, what was the cost of the car after these, what was it, five years, term of five years, yeah. Question five. So same setup as before, we wanna purchase a $24,000 car and we have $4,000 in our savings, but we want to save more for a down payment. So you decide to save $400 per month for exactly one year to add to the down payment. So including the 4,000, how much money uh, decide what your new principal amount is? What is your uh, payment? So what's your principal going to be? Um, so a, a, one, one extra step. So you have the 24,000 minus the 4,000 and then minus however much you saved in that extra year. And again, I'll leave that those details to you. And the rest of that is again, just using the loan payment formula. So just applying the loan payment formula. And the rest of it is uh, the same type of questions. How much did you pay in total? How much was paid in interest? And uh, number six, using the same situation. So looking at the same, the same car that we had in questions four and five. In this case, um, how much would you have to save in two years, if you're making a, um, in order to not take out a loan to pay for the car. So uh, question six is more of a concept question. You're not using the interest formula there, uh, but that is question six. And that is the entire uh, mini project quiz. So for the mini project quiz, again, question one is a little bit different from the what we'd had in lecture. And I apologize for that, but we, we address that. So in question one, we have the compound interest formula, but instead of solving for the print, uh, for the uh, amount, the total balance A, we're, sol we're solving for the principal amount B. Uh, question two, we're using the compound interest formula, but we're using a, a, a uh, time amount of one month. So Y is one twelfth, since Y is always given in, in years, how many years? One month is one twelfth of a year. Uh, question three is your cash flow. Question four and five are the loan payment formulas. And then question six is just an application question.
question. How much do you have to save to pay off the car from the previous questions without taking out a loan? If you save money, um, the same amount of money, if you invest the same amount of money uh, each month in a, in a savings account. Okay, so that is, that is the mini project quiz. Um, for now, let's have that due uh, this Sunday. Um, if there are issues with it, then we could probably extend it, but I think, I think you guys should be able to finish it. We'll, we'll see. Uh, let me stop the share there. Um, that's all of chapter four. So chapter four, we, we finished the lecture today. We had that one last example from section 4D. And then we had the chapter four uh, mini quiz, which I, I wanted to go through some of those questions since they're a little bit less direct. Um, so next week, sorry, yes, go ahead. 4E or do we skip 4E? Uh, 4E, we're just gonna skip completely. Uh, let me just double check that. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so 4E, yeah, 4E, we're skipping completely. So for chapter four, we had 4A, 4B, and 4D that we lectured on. Uh, 4C, I want you to read through. So it has the mini, no, not the mini product, the uh, reading check. So just uh, two questions from that reading. And that's, that's it for chapter four. And we'll start chapter five then uh, next week, which is exactly what we had on our schedule. So we're ending a little bit early, early today, but we are right on schedule with uh, our tentative class schedule but when you adjust for for that mistake that I made copying the, the leap year um, instead, because yeah, but uh, so that's chapter four. So chapter four, uh, reading checks and homework will be due this weekend as well as the mini project quiz. Um, and we'll start chapter five next week. Uh, any last minute questions before I let you guys go? Okay. Um, I see no questions. So thank you guys for uh, coming, for your, your patience uh, with me and my technological illiteracy. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, either through email or um, in office hours tonight. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next class. Uh, before I leave, one question. Uh, yes, question. So uh, for the next school project, uh, when can we email you whenever we want to when we want to look alone? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you can go ahead and do that now, since since you have uh, since we've turned in project one. Uh, if you want to work alone for project two, you can send me an email uh, anytime now. Can can you uh, uh, excuse me, Rosa? I'm kind of jumping on you, but I was wondering, can you give us a, a kind of a ballpark of what the second project will be? Because a lot of us are considering doing it by ourselves because it's very hard to coordinate. Uh, everybody's schedules and work working from a distance with each other. Right. Um, so, so the next project um, is going to be on uh, hypothetically purchasing a house. So, given a specific situation, which um, so here's here's one that this is probably not going to be the one for the project. But for example, uh, you have a household with two adults, say two kids. I'll give you the annual income for the family give you the credit score. And given that situation, if you're looking for a house in Las Vegas, um, find, find a house on Zillow, figure out what you would use for the loan, how much it would cost to uh, initially move into the house, how much are you paying for the mortgage? Um, that's gonna be project two. What is Zillow? Oh, uh, Zillow is just an on online, um, online website that you can search for apartments or houses uh, in any given area. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like confused. Like you uh, are we going to be covering some of this in another class or another? Uh, no, so the the um, most of it once so um, once I give you the annual income, you're going to uh, decide what type of a house would fit your income. 
And then the rest of that is going to be applying uh, chapter four, like budget stuff to the situation. That's just a bare bones summary. It, it, it'll make a lot more sense when, when, when we get it. it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and post that uh, this week or, or next uh, beginning of next week at the latest. Will we have to use any special software to turn that in or or can we just type it up on anything and upload it? Um, no, just as, just the same as this as project one. Okay. Um, any other questions, let me know. I'm going to stop the recording here.